Hey everyone, Paul here from FamilyWheels.ca and this week, well, you know, a lot of times when I'm reviewing cars with you, we'll look at safety features as well. Obviously something really important to families when they're shopping around for a vehicle. And uh, I'll often mention what the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety, what rating uh, the vehicle has gotten from that organization. It's an important organization when it comes to uh, testing out the safety of a vehicle uh, and to better understand what it's all about, why they do what they do, where they get their car from, cars from and the sort of safety features to keep in mind when you are shopping for a car of your own. I have Russ Rader on the line. He speaks for the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety and you've got him on the line right now. Thanks very much for joining us, Russ. Thanks for having me, Paul. Hey, so I wanted to start out just by getting a little bit of background on your organization. What's the story? How long have you been around for and what is it that you specifically focus on doing? Well, the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety has been around um, since 1959 and it was uh, founded by um, by insurance companies with the mission of uh, finding ways to reduce crashes. We are supported by about 85% of the uh, insurance industry in North America. We just uh, began getting members from Canada as well. People know us as, a, as the organization that does crash tests of new vehicles, but we also do uh, a lot of other research on uh, safety. And um, we purchase all of the vehicles that we test from uh, local dealers and um, test about, we do about 85, 80 to 85 tests per year at our vehicle research center in Rutgersville, Virginia. So I was going to ask you about that. So your vehicles aren't sourced from the manufacturers directly. You're actually going just like anyone would to a lot and picking up a car like Joe Schmo. Yeah, we want to get the vehicles as they, as a consumer would purchase them. And so we purchase all of our vehicles. Um, one of the things that happens, especially this time of year, is that a lot of automakers uh, ask us to conduct tests of specific vehicles. If they're introducing a new model um, and they want to advertise the results early in the model year, they will ask us to do a specific test outside of our uh, normal schedule. And in that case, we still go buy the vehicles, but we ask the manufacturer to reimburse us for the cost of the vehicle. And when there are sometimes when we're looking at a certain vehicle, if people are shopping around, or if I'm doing my research before I'll go out and do a review, sometimes a vehicle isn't uh, showing up on the IIHS's website. Why? Why would that be? Well, we try to work our way through logical vehicle groups. So um, we test, you know, for example, mid-sized sedans together or small SUVs together, and then release the results um, as a package. Um, we can't test everything all, uh, you know, early in the year, so we try to test as many vehicles as we can. We often get questions about why haven't you tested this particular sedan that I'm interested in, um, and it's just a matter of test time and being able to get it, get it in. But we're also doing other kinds of tests. Um, we've started a crash avoidance test program, so we're and that can that works uh, constantly throughout the year. So we're testing uh, automatic braking features on our test track, um, and we just started uh, this year doing tests of headlight performance, which also goes on on our test track um, after dark. So we are doing tests throughout the day and into the night. So what are the major features that people should be paying attention to in terms of safety when they're going and buying a new car? Well, in terms of, uh, you know, for standard features, uh, airbags, front and side, and um, electronic st stability control, those things are standard on most new vehicles. Um, optional features that you should look at are, um, there are a lot of things that are available on vehicles now uh, that are have a lot of potential to reduce crashes. We know, for example, that front crash prevention systems, the forward collision warning and automatic braking systems that are available uh, now are reducing crashes. We see that vehicles with automatic braking, for example, are um, uh, that feature is preventing 40% uh, of front into rear crashes, the kinds of crashes that are common in commuter traffic. And the forward collision warning systems without auto brake are also effective. Um, the jury is still out on some of these other features that you can buy. Um, lane departure warning, for example, um, has been disappointing. We're not seeing big effects from that. Um, but other kinds of features do have a lot of potential, like blind zone detection and rear cameras. Um, so a lot of those features that you can 
um, that are available on vehicles um, are going to become increasingly standard as we see them becoming effective out on the road. For example, uh, the automakers have committed to making uh, automatic braking standard on all new vehicles by 2022. So uh, that's coming quickly and is is going to be standard even before that on a lot of the vehicles. And it does mean that as a result, you've kind of had to kind of change the way you're testing vehicles as well, because you've got a top safety pick plus rating as well as a top safety pick rating. Can you describe the difference between the two and how much people should be paying attention to those ratings when they are looking at buying a new car? Yeah, the, the top safety pick plus rating is our highest uh, level award. And we intend top safety pick plus to sort of recognize state of the art safety. So a vehicle has to get good ratings in all of the five crash worthiness tests that we do. We do two frontal tests, a moderate overlap and a small overlap, a side impact test, a um, rear impact test that, um, that simulates a rear impact, say if you're stopped at a stoplight and somebody hits you from behind. Um, and a uh, rollover roof strength test, which um, looks at how well the roof and the structure of the roof will hold up in a rollover crash. Um, and then top, in order to get that top safety pick plus award, in addition to the crash worthiness test, getting a good rating on all of those, uh, you also have to have an effective um, uh, automatic braking system uh, that earns, performs well in our test. And for Top Safety Pick Plus, one of the things that we're planning to add to that next year is that you'll have to be a good or acceptable in our headlight performance ratings, which are new. Um, and we're recognizing headlights now because we see in the research uh, that the, um, the uh, certain kinds of headlights are reducing crashes. So they, headlights are an important technology for preventing crashes. At the same time, if a vehicle doesn't get a top safety pick rating from you, how much weight should people be giving to that in, in terms of considering whether they should go into that vehicle? Is it, is it, should it be quite concerning to people if, if in a certain category the vehicle isn't getting a good or best rating that you offer? Well, yeah, I mean, if you're shopping for a new vehicle and safety is one of your priorities, um, you should look for a vehicle that earns the top safety pick or top safety pick plus rating uh, and avoid those that don't. Um, the good news is there's lots of choices now because the automakers respond to uh, the tests that we do. Um, and it, no matter what vehicle category you are shopping in, there are a number of vehicles and sometimes many vehicles in the category that earn the top safety pick plus rating now. So, you know, there really isn't any reason to buy a vehicle that earns less than that. If it's not in the top safety pick category, uh, there, you know, one of the reasons is that the vehicle is not getting um, a good rating in the new tough small overlap uh, crash test, which is an important test because about 25% of the serious injuries that still occur in frontal crashes or in these small overlap crashes. Yeah, so what does that so mean? What, not, what, would that, what would that look like? What would a small overlap crash be? And what would the injuries be? A small overlap crash simulates what happens if uh, it's almost like a crash that almost doesn't happen where you're driving on the highway and an oncoming vehicle uh, slides over the center lane and clips you on the driver's side. Or you go off the road and you hit a telephone pole or a tree on the uh, far left side, driver's side of the vehicle. Um, and if the vehicle is not designed for it, you can get a lot of structural collapse, a lot of metal in the occupant compartment getting pushed back toward the uh, driver. So the small overlap test is important because it accounts for a good chunk of the serious injuries that occur in frontal crashes. Are there certain vehicles this past year that have been a surprise disappointment for your testers? Have we had any surprise disappointments? Well, we just recently conducted a series of tests where we you know, when we do the small overlap test, we're doing it on the driver's side. Um, but we wanted to uh, do a research project to see uh, whether the manufacturers were also putting the same protection onto the passenger side of the vehicle. And uh, we found some uh, results that um, 
were concerning, where some manufacturers um, are not doing, uh, are not putting the same countermeasures on the side. The Toyota RAV4, for example, is a vehicle. Toyota had made improvements to get a good rating on the uh, on the on the driver side, but. When you do a teardown of the vehicle, you can see that the same structures are not present on the driver's side. And so we released those results recently to prod the manufacturers to uh, make those same improvements on the passenger side because both drivers and passengers should get equal protection in these serious crashes. You really are a watchdog in a lot of ways, kind of keeping an eye on these, uh, on these uh, manufacturers and making sure that you know, we're getting into as safe a car as you possibly can. While we get some pushback when we introduce a new test, like the small overlap test, for example, um, manufacturers say, "Oh, that's too hard. I don't. I just, you know, we're not going to be able to meet that level of crash protection, or um, it's going to cause us to, you know, add a lot of weight to the vehicle, and we won't be able to meet our fuel economy um, goals." Um, but they figure out a way to do it, and they know that the tests are grounded in. Uh, solid research. So uh, the manufacturers um, have been moving more and more quickly um, than in the past when we introduce a new test. And that's good for consumers because that means they have uh, a lot of choices of vehicles that perform very well providing state-of-the-art safety. Of course, we had a, a death this past week in a Tesla uh, and when a gentleman was driving down the road with uh, autopilot engaged. Um, some of these technologies are coming up so quickly and advancing and getting into cars so quickly. Is it hard to keep up? Well, I think that, uh, yeah, it is advancing quickly. And, and part of the reason that we recently um, expanded our vehicle research center uh, with a new covered track for doing testing of these vehicles is so we can keep up and that we can move quickly to assess different kinds of technologies when they um, come on the market. We're going to have some uh, robot cars of our own to do some of this testing to see how the systems work. The Tesla case is, you know, of course tragic, um, but it points to uh, a couple of things, which is one, you know, Tesla probably has one of the most um, uh, advanced autopilot features, um, uh, almost a, almost a self-driving feature in some sort of situ in uh, some driving situations that apparently was engaged um, at the time of this crash. Uh, but it points to the fact that drivers cannot just tune out and not be paying attention when these systems are engaged. But it also points to the um, to the fact that you know there's a lot of hype about fully autonomous vehicles being right around the corner to take us from point A to point B. Um, it's probably a long way off, but we're going to see more and more of these building block features like automatic braking, and we shouldn't let what happened with Tesla inhibit the development of those things, because those are features that we know are reducing crashes right now in the real world, and there are a lot more of those features coming that could really be beneficial. Fascinating time to be talking about car safety because so much is happening so quickly. I really appreciate yeah. you joining me. Oh, happy to do it. Anytime. Glad to talk about these things.